there, Jonathan here, and welcome to Learn to Play Through, and welcome to my workstation. Today we're going to be finishing the painting process of the Bandito and the U.S. Marshal. Where I'll be giving them their first color, which is called a base coat, detailing and highlighting if needed, a wash to add some depth and realism, a basing to give a feel of the surroundings, and then finishing off with a varnish to help protect. Now during this painting process, think of it more as painting tips and tricks than actual painting. For the painting, this is geared towards someone who has at least picked up a paintbrush at least once. So I'll be painting any miniatures off screen and then returning to discuss the step-by-step -step of the painting I just did. This way you'll know what you're about to get into. But if you really need to see someone painting the Bandito, then you can head on over to the YouTube channel Tabletop Noob to watch him paint this miniature, the Bandito, paint by paint. I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the show notes where you can find the video. As for the tips and tricks, these are geared towards all levels of painters as you can never stop learning. So with that, just go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy. Now before we begin the painting process, here's a tip to help you out with gloppy paints. So, got your miniature ready? Got your paint ready? And, glop. Okay, stop. Normally your paint starts out thick, so you'll need to thin them down with some water so that you can control and apply smooth layers of paint, not glop. And I've found a 2 to 1 to 4 to 1 paint to water ratio works out pretty smoothly. And just like in the reviving of the paints tip, I use distilled water for my water when I thin out my paints so that no damage might occur to the color and or application of your paint. Now the question is, are you a water dipper or a water bottler? And what the difference is, is that for water dippers, they'll go ahead and they'll take their paintbrush, get a bunch of paint, put it onto their paint tray or a piece of paper or something like that, then they'll go ahead and take that same paintbrush, they'll dip it in the water, and then they'll mix up the paint and the water together. Now me, I'm a water bottler where I'll go ahead and take the paint, give it one, two drops, and then I'll go ahead and grab my water, give it one drop for a two to one ratio, and then I'll go ahead and just use the uh, bottom of a paintbrush stick here and just mix it up, and then we're good to go. Now, if there's not enough water, you're gonna get glop. Now, as seen here from the YouTube channel Warhammer TV, and I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the show notes where you can find the video. Paint ends up being lumpy and the color is not consistent from where they painted. Now if they also did a second coat, that's actually going to make the lumpiness even worse. So definitely need to have uh, plenty of water in there to thin out your uh, paints. Now if you do have enough water, great. Thumbs up, start painting, let's get going. As you can see here in this new picture of the uh, same channel of Warhammer TV, the color is inconsistent because of adding the water, but it is so much smoother across the surface. And then, as you see in this next picture from Warhammer TV, then by adding a second coat, this is going to even out the color even more and keep the smoothness across the area. Now, if you end up putting too much water, in there you're going to get what's called a wash and now washes can be good and bad you just gotta experiment and don't be afraid now, as you can see here from the YouTube channel Black Magic Craft and I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the show notes where you can find the video wash is a technique that doles down the base coat and produces some shadowing effects by running off of the highlighted areas so that you can see the underlying base coat and then it goes down into the creases of your miniature to provide a shadow. 
Now they also said basically they're just really watered down paints. And as you can see here from the two miniatures that I painted over three decades ago when I first uh, started using washes, the Orc Shaman and the Orc Amputee, all I did was I took some Tester's Black Enamel Paint and I just added some water to it and it thinned out and became its own wash. Now nowadays they have pre-made washes but if you wish, you can go ahead and make your own. Now in the same video by Black Magic Craft, you can see here, there's the ingredients that they use to make their own washes. They use some water, and then either paint or ink, and then they use some kind of a flow aid, whether they purchase that from the store, or they actually just use some dish soap. And then they also have some matte medium. Now if you don't want to use the basic black or dark wash, you can actually make any kind of color you want. As seen here by the YouTube channel Goobertown Hobbies, and I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the show notes where you can find the video, you can change out black to any color that you want, whether it be blue, green, purple, brown, or orange. Now you can also tailor your washes to certain areas of your base coats. And with that, as you can see here from the YouTube channel Gaming Geek, and I'll go ahead and leave that link down in the show notes where you can find the video, he went ahead and did a dark wash to the clothes of the miniature, and then he went ahead and took a red color and added a bunch of water to it to make a wash out of that to add it to the tentacles, and it looks pretty dang good. So in the end... Take your time and be nice to your miniature, and your miniature will be nice to you. Well, that should do it for now. i got plenty more miniatures to paint, so plenty of tips coming your way. First up in the painting process is the Bandito. After analyzing the Bandito, it looks like I'll be painting the Bandito in three steps. Since there is no painting guide that I can use as a reference for what the Bandito looks like or what colors to use, I have found several pictures to use as reference, including the Hero Character Sheet. For the paints, I'm only going to be using the paints that came with the Shadows of Brimstone Heroes of the Old West paint set. So now that we are ready to go, let's go ahead and see what we'll be doing in step one. For step one, we're going to be applying that first color, the base coat, and we've got about 13 different areas to deal with. we got the hat, hair, flesh, and coat, uh, neckerchief, the bandolier, the pistol, and the dynamite. Uh, we've got a sash, pouch, the pants and boots, and finally the base rim. For the hat, we're going to be using the Desert Yellow. And then on the inside of the hat, and then around the outer edge, we're going to be using Sloon Red as an accent. For the hair, we got some Shadow Black. And then for our flesh, we'll be using the Light Flesh. For the coat, we're going to be using a very light yellow. So we'll be taking a couple drops of spirit white and then adding in some of the desert yellow just to give it a little tinge of uh, yellow there. Then for our pants, we're going to be doing a dark blue. So we'll take the portal blue and then we're going to be adding some shadow black to it to darken it up a little bit. For our neckerchief and sash, we'll be using the saloon red. And then for the dynamite, we got multiple colors here of red, green, and black. For the sticks of dynamite itself, we'll be painting that a saloon red. And then for the fuse, we'll be using a green. So we'll be using portal blue along with desert yellow to make our green. 
And then for the twine that holds the dynamite sticks together, we'll be painting those shadow black. For the pistol, we have the pistol metal. And then for the bandolier, the pouch, the boots, and the base rim, we'll be painting that the dark brown, the dark flesh. So with all that information and paints ready to go, let's go ahead and start painting our base coats with step one. Hello there and welcome back as we just finished up step one of applying that first color, the base coat, to our bandito. Step one took me about two hours to complete. Okay, don't ask. <laughs> I, I have no idea why, but I know I did have a good time painting the bandito. Uh, we did have to do a lot of uh, paint mixing, where we had to paint the uh, pants a dark blue, so we used that portal blue and added some shadow black into it. And then for the coat, I wanted to give it a little tinge of yellow, so we had the spirit white and then added some of that desert yellow to it to make it a little bit more yellow. Um, had to add a lot more than I thought I was going to be adding to it, so definitely not a uh, two to one ratio of your like blue to black or white to yellow but there was a lot more than I thought because it really wasn't changing the color too fast so uh, definitely uh, uh, figure about your ratios when you're wanting to make and mix colors uh, don't think that it's going to change really quick but just keep adding colors to it and eventually it'll get the color you need so let's go ahead and take a look at our banditos see what we got also uh, as you can see here, we got ourselves the issue with our black primer bleeding through the reds again on the sash and the dynamite. Um, as you can see on the coat, it's also bleeding through uh, underneath the uh, right arm and on the left arm. Uh, you can barely see it because the light is kind of washing out the, uh, the color of the coat there, but some of the black is bleeding through. I'm going to deal with that. Uh, probably another two coats, and that should cover it up pretty good. Uh, we've got a couple issues with the face and the hat. So for the face, as you can see here, he's got a goatee. <laughs> now, I didn't really intend to paint him with the goatee, but for the uh, shadow black, when I was mixing it up, the agitator balls just didn't seem to be doing their job too good. And when I applied the paint, it was kind of runny, and so it bled down all in that area there. And we're going to have to come back with some of that light flesh and give him a Saturday night shave and chop off that beard. Because this is pretty much what I wanted the Bandito to look like with just a mustache. So I'll go ahead and uh, do that painting. Uh, next issue we have is with the hat. Now you can see just above his face, you got those little red designs and about five red designs off of his left side are actually molded from the miniature and then when you go around the back of the hat they disappear so all I did is took a precise detailed paintbrush and some red and every so often I did a little blip of red as I went around and it actually looks pretty good there like it was a red design that's where like the molding should be but there's actually no molding from the miniature on there, so it turned out pretty good. So like what I said before was uh, use your paint to represent the molding of the miniature sometimes. So I had to do that around the uh, brim of the hat. And then underneath the hat really wasn't an issue, but as you can see underneath there we got another molding area of red that I went ahead and added a design to. So, we got ourselves a little uh, color theme going there of red. We got red on the inside, red on the rim, got red on the neckerchief, uh, red on the sash, and red on the dynamite. Well, the dynamite really doesn't count since it's not clothing, so <laughs> we're okay with that. Over here on his right side, uh, can't really see much of an issue. Maybe a little bit on the, uh, the back part of the sash and where it comes down just past the pouch. Uh, once again, the black is bleeding through there, so we'll have to deal with that. 
I can see it a little bit better here off the back where the uh, sash, the red part, is not holding back the black primer. So, like I said, probably a couple more coats and that should be uh, pretty nice there. So, uh, the neckerchief though, once again, with the issues that we had with the little details around the uh, brim of the hat, neckerchiefs are the same way where there is no mold line of the neckerchief going around the bandito's neck, so I just went ahead and took some uh, red paint with the precise detailed paintbrush and just made a line around the neck of the bandito, so it looks like there's a, uh, a neckerchief going around his neck there. So, did pretty good there. Uh, we do have an issue coming off of his right hand though. As you can see there, it looks like a little bit of extra stuff. So as you can see, we got some mold line issues off the right hand and the end of the gun. Uh, some mold line looks like underneath his arm there on his coat. And there's a couple more areas that I'm going to have to deal with. And I'm going to go ahead and deal with them now before we actually get into step two. So that when we go and do our touch-ups and make the Bandito's colors solid, we don't have to worry about trying to fix those mold lines then because then you're really going to damage the paint that you're real applying at that time. So we'll go ahead and fix those up before we continue on to step two. Off on his left side, uh, you can see here with the black twine that's holding the dynamite together, it looks kind of, uh, kind of messy. And actually, once again, the uh, shadow black there was not mixed up too good, so the black kind of bled all over the place, so we're going to have to go ahead and fix that up. And then also, as you can see, he's got uh, some dark brown boots on, and then we got ourselves a dark brown base. And you might think, well, that's kind of bland. you got dark brown to dark brown. Well, remember, during our basing, we're going to be putting some gravel on our base here, so it'll be dark brown boots and then gravel. So, there really won't be this just flow of all dark brown down below. So, it'll look pretty nice when we get to that point. Now, also, with the dark brown to dark brown, we didn't really have to worry about being precise when we paint, like we did with the saloon girl, where she had red boots, and then when we painted the base, we touched the right boot, with some brown on the red boot, and that made a mess, so when we did touch-ups, we had to go ahead and paint it, but then of course, the red went on to the base. So just a big cycle back and forth of putting extra paint everywhere else that, just remember, go nice and slow and nice and easy, that way you're gonna go ahead and save time in the long run. So, that one's looking pretty good there. Now we get ourselves a warm eye view here. Uh, issue we have here is with the hat. Now, what you might want to do is called, uh, well, it's called a dry brush run, but not really a dry brush where you put the, the light coating of paint on. It's actually, there's no paint on your brush, and you're going to go ahead and you're going to run the brush certain ways across the areas that you want to paint because the issue we had with the bandito with the underneath his hat was that trying to paint it I was bumping into the base and on um, the dynamite and stuff like that and then later on when I painted the face and the hair it was a lot easier just painting right around it because there was nothing obstructing the flow of the paintbrush so with that do a dry brush run and find out what looks good first with your painting of that dry brush and then when you go to paint, go ahead and paint that first and then paint the other area second. So what I should have done was painted underneath the hat first because there are a lot of bad uh, brush marks underneath there. And then come back and paint the face and the hair around second. Now a major issue we were having um, prior coming up to our bandito was that our bandito was popping off our wooden dowel here. And what's happening is that you can see here is that our poster tack is underneath attaching the plastic base to the wooden dowel. Well, what's happening is that our base and the poster tack is coming off of the wooden dowel every so often, and it almost even fell in the paint a couple times. So you got to be careful with that. So what I did was 
that. As you can see here, this is of course the the area that the poster tack was being placed on. And what I ended up doing was I just took a flat-headed screw and screwed a washer down onto the dowel. So now what's happening is that actually what's a lot of people are doing, a lot of painters are doing, is that they put the poster tack onto like pill bottle tops or uh, soda bottle tops and that way it's going from the poster tack onto a plastic surface. So I went ahead and put some metal onto the wooden dowel. That way that the poster tack is now securing onto metal more than it is on the wood. And for some reason, of course, the wood is not holding the poster tack better than the metal is. So now, our miniature ain't going to go flying off into some paint anymore. So, good deal. Good deal with that. So there's a helpful hint so that your miniature doesn't go flying. Well, we're going to look down here with a bird's view, and you can see the red rim there on the inside part of the hat. And then also we got our base, the uh, the feet of the bandito, or it's just like the saloon girl where they're nice and parallel and gives a nice big open area. So we'll go ahead and look at that when we get to step three with our basing to figure out what we're actually going to do there. And then we'll go from there. So everything is looking good so far for our bandito. And now with the uh, base coats applied, let's go ahead and see what we'll be doing in step two. So for step two, we got our touch-ups, detailing, highlighting, and wash to deal with. Once again, we're going to go ahead and do the entire model here. And for the touch-ups, we'll be coming back. And there really wasn't a lot of paint being pushed to a lot of the other areas. Even though it did take me two hours, maybe that could have been why it took so long, because I didn't bump into the other areas. So the only really part of the touch-ups is with the coat and definitely our red and the pants with the blue is really covering up the black a lot so it's really not that big of an issue but we'll have to go ahead and do a couple more coats in those areas so that the black primer is not coming through so we'll deal with that uh, for the detailing uh, we got a belt buckle in front I think to deal with um, on the bandolier on the pouches there might be a little bit of buttons to deal with so we'll definitely uh, have to use our uh, toothpick trick to go really fine point to dab right onto the button and not mess up those pouches. Uh, for the highlighting, I definitely want to highlight the pants a lot. I don't want to keep them that nice dark blue. I want to put a lot of white on there. So it actually shows not dinginess of the pants, but more like the ruggedness of what the bandito is doing in the Wild West. And then for our wash, we'll go ahead and apply the soft tone ink all over and definitely to his face so it gets into the eye socket area so we don't have to worry about trying to paint some pupils in there. We'll go ahead and use our soft tone ink for that issue. And with that, that should be doing it for step two. So with all that information and paints ready to go, let's go ahead and continue on with step two. Hello there and welcome back as we just finished up step two with our touch-ups, detailing, highlighting, and a wash to our bandito. Step two took me about two hours to complete. I just like to say that I'm very happy with the results here. Now we did have some lengthy issues like with the coat and the pants because we had to go ahead and mix some paints together to get those colors. And then we also had a color change on one of the areas and we'll go ahead and address that here pretty soon. So let's go ahead and take a look at our Bandito, where he's looking all nice and vibrant with his solid base coats here. Especially the reds, we had that issue with the black primer still bleeding through, so we had to apply about two or three layers on the reds, so that was being an issue. There's a nice zoom in of his face there, and it looks like our Bandito's got his Saturday night shave done, where we went ahead and removed his beard. So his face looks good. And then we went ahead and fixed up that uh, red rim of the hat. 
and a little detailing there so that looks pretty nice and then the red neckerchief that's bleeding a little bit over onto the ammo belt and also the coat is doing the same now it's not that bad in the aspect that when you go to do a wash the wash is going to kind of hide it a little bit but kind of blend it in with the other areas so don't be too concerned if you have a little bit of a mistake if you're going to apply a wash but if you got blotches all over the place then that's definitely going to be an issue to, to address. Over here on his right side, colors are looking good. And if you remember, we had that issue with the mold lines on the gun and the hand. So as you can see, it looks like they're gone there. And we'll go, ahead to, go to the back. As you can see that we've removed the mold lines. Um, the colors of the back, they're pretty solid, especially with the reds. Now holding back the black primer. And we'll go ahead and zoom in on the gun and the right hand here as you can see that the mold lines are gone. And definitely address that as early as you can. Get rid of those mold lines so that you don't have to go ahead and scrape off the paint that you had applied. And especially when you get down farther and farther into your painting and then if you have to remove something, boy, that's just going to pull your heartstrings and you're just going to regret it. So definitely get to that as soon as you can. Over on the left side here, same thing, all the colors are looking nice and vibrant. And on the dynamite, the black uh, twine that holds it together, um, definitely looking good as it's now a solid black line. It's all nice and fuzzy. I did shake up the uh, shadow black paint a lot so that it would become thicker, so that when I did apply it with a, uh, a detailed paintbrush, it was able to, to get that line. And I was thinking of using a, a fine tip black permanent marker to do that, but I decided to go ahead and stick with just paints and came out pretty good. So we do have an issue with the miniature still falling off of our uh, dowel here. Now remember we did uh, attach a washer to the top, but it's still coming off. So I went ahead and attached a larger washer. So went ahead and just put a larger washer on there. So now we got more of a surface area, so it'll have more of the poster tack. So I just put the poster tack on there and there you go. Bandito's all nice and stuck. So next we go into our detailing here. And I went ahead and got some of the pistol metal and applied it onto his bandolier pouches there. Gave him a little buttons, silver buttons. And I went ahead and just did the old toothpick trick. So just a little dab and a little dot, bip, and now we got a button made of silver. Now the color change we did was actually on his boots. So as you can see, the boots are now white and uh, brown. And the white is actually the same color as the coat. So it's spirit white with that tinge of uh, desert yellow in it. And the pictures I saw made it look like that the boot was all one color. But when you look closely on the miniature, the, actually the mold of the miniature, there's actually uh, like boot coverings there or boot leggings. So I had to figure out what am I going to do? Do I do the same color or change it or what? So I decided to go ahead and change it. And I figured, well, the boot uh, leggings would match with the coat and sure enough it looked pretty good. So on the back there the leggings are looking pretty good. And then for other detailing on the bandolier belt and the ammo belt I went ahead and uh, put some of that uh, pistol metal on there. Um, not necessarily a uh, a buckle but there was some kind of metal that looked like it went across there so did that. It looks pretty nice. Next I came up into the highlighting and I definitely wanted to hit the pants pretty good to give them a nice rugged look. So they're all all whited up there. I think I overdid it with the red on the sash and the dynamite. So definitely watch it and don't go a little bit crazy with your highlighting because now it looks the same way with the uh, saloon girl. It looks like he's just been drug on the ground instead of just giving a nice uh, highlighting as such. And definitely on the back, same way. Pants are looking nice and rugged, but the reds are looking uh, 
like he's just been drug on the ground. And definitely, you know, if you ever do the highlights on the bandolier and the uh, ammo belt, you know, you can't see those uh, metal straps as good. So definitely watch it when you do your highlighting that you're going to end up um, overcoating it too much and you won't be able to see things. So when I was completed with all that and all happy, I decided to go ahead and apply that wash with the soft tone ink. And it toned down the pants a little bit, but you still see some good solid uh, highlighting there, so it's looking pretty good. And we're going to go ahead and zoom in on the face here because, remember I tried doing the, uh, the one dot to get that pupil look and it didn't work. And as I'm doing the, the wash for the eyes, it looks like it's uh, holding up. So this is the third miniature I've done with that technique and I'm pretty happy with it. I think the rest of my miniatures I do, I'm going to do with just a wash for the eye socket area. Now another thing is the applying of wash, apply it several times to give it more of a darkening effect. So with the highlighting of this, the light coming down underneath the hat, it's going to be more of a shadowy area. So as you can see here, the underneath the hat looks a lot darker than like the coat so I because I applied several washes onto the underside of the hat to make it look like a darker area so it turned out fairly well there on the back same way gotten in all the creases and the crevices so it's showing off the shadows and then it kind of bled off to the highlighted areas so as you can see the pants are kind of shiny there but it's not glossy like gloss paint but it is shiny and it could also be maybe the fact of the uh, camera catching the angle off the pants to the light source. So, looking pretty good, looking pretty good there. So overall, the uh, Bandito seemed to come out pretty dang good. Happy with the results here. But we did have an issue. And the issue we had was actually an accident. So as you can see here, the Bandito looks all nice and strong, pointing his gun off to the side there. Well... As you look at the gun, it now looks like that. So our Bandito had fallen down and could not get back up, and the pistol's barrel broke off. So what had happened was, is I had the Bandito on the dowel standing up like this, and I was going to start dealing with the base. And I went over here, and I grabbed the rocks for the base, and when I brought it back, boom, I hit the Bandito. And the Bandito flew down, hit the table, and the pistol barrel whoo, went flying. And also the fuse of the dynamite, it kind of bent over a little bit and was barely hanging on. But luckily enough, I put some super glue on there and bent it back and it was okay. So I went ahead and I searched and searched for this missing barrel piece. And I looked on the ground with the flashlight. And then I looked again, and I looked again, and I looked again, and I could not find it. And I figured, okay, fine, if it didn't fall on the ground, maybe it's on the table here on my workstation somewhere. So this is what pretty much the workstation looked like before. I have my area here, and then I got the printer on the left, and stuff like that. And then I just tore it down. So cut it all the way down to its bare minimum. I looked and looked. I went ahead and even vacuumed the floor with the um, uh, Dyson vacuum cleaner we have so that it's got not a bag but that clear cylinder and then I took that cylinder and I dumped it out onto my, my cutting board and I searched through that and I looked and looked and I could not find it. So now our Bandito, instead of holding a pistol, he's now holding a holdout pistol. <laughs> so he must be an outlaw slash performer if he's able to use a holdout pistol. So, but overall, even with the holdout pistol that he's holding now, he's looking very, very good. So I'm very happy with him. And with our final step remaining, let's go ahead and see what we'll be doing in step three. So step three, we got our basing and protecting. And for the base, we'll be putting the gravel down and some of that, uh, you know, dead grass to look like some kind of a bush and some rocks in some sort. So I don't know exactly what we'll be doing with that, so we'll find out pretty soon. And then for protecting, we'll be using that spray-on varnish from Testers, and that spray lacquer, the matte varnish, so we'll, we'll dull down the look if there's any kind of shiny areas 
off on the Bandito here. So, with all that information, spray and other items ready to go, let's go ahead and finish our miniature with step three. Hello there and welcome back as we just finished up step three with our basing and protecting of our Bandito. Step three took me about 45 minutes to complete. I just want to say that I'm very happy with the results here. On another note, I want to say that I think that basing is definitely an unsung hero and it doesn't get a lot of credit where credit is due. Uh, you look at this miniature and think, well, it's a bandito, so it's Wild Wild West, but you know, if you look at it from the basing point of view, all it is is that there's a fighter standing on top of a base and the base has got gravel, a big rock, and a dead bush. So you definitely know that this miniature is in an area that is very dry and lacking water. So I think a lot of people will look at miniatures and think that painting's better because it's like, oh, that's an awesome paint job. I like the way you blended it and the way that you feathered it. But for me, definitely basing is a little bit better because it tells the whole story of the miniature. Now, before we get on and talk about the basing and protecting of our miniature here, I just want to talk about the safety and protection of our miniatures. Now, I'm not talking about protection of the spray lacquer that stops the oils from your hands or the bumping around of your miniature on other ones. Um, I want to talk about what happened in the last step where I said I placed the miniature here grabbed the container of rocks and I brought them over and it hit the miniature, the barrel of the gun hit the desk and went flying. And I have no idea where it went. I looked on the ground several times, couldn't find it, tore apart the desk, moved the desk out so that I could lift it up to look on the floating desk holders around the edges. And what ended up happening that I regret is that I bumped into the wall here. Now, sure, it's just this little area that's white, but you know what? Every time I see that now, it basically tells me, be nice to your miniature, safety and protection-wise. So, other than just placing them down, which can still bump around, I figured, well, I need to do something and help out the protection of my miniatures. So, what I did is went out to the garage, and I got a 2x6, 6 inches long, and then I went and pounded some nails, one, two, three, into the wood, chopped off their heads, and then the wooden dowels that I got here, I went ahead and drilled a hole in the bottom. So now I go ahead and just place them, boop, right there. So now they can move around a little bit, but the base is going to definitely stop them from moving around. Then I got a couple extra ones, so I can take two more. And if I want to do some mass production of miniatures, I got some more area to deal with there. But definitely the, uh, the middle one is for the uh, larger or the, the huge ones. It's got like a three to four inch base. So put that in there and you got the three to four inch base on there and the big miniature on there. You definitely don't have to worry about the miniature going to fall over because of this big piece of wood. So, and also you need to use a lot of uh, self-control not to just place the miniature down or put them here if you have this around. You know, slow down, take it easy. You can go ahead and... Put that there, go out and do what you have to do, come back later, get your miniature off of the nail, and continue on with what you're doing. So, nice and easy, a little bit of protection here by using this piece of wood, a bigger base, and all it is is just some nails put in there and a hole in the bottom. There we go. So now we can go ahead and talk about the basing and the protecting of our miniature. So as you can see here, our Bandito is set back on the base, giving a big area up front here. So I went ahead and put on the left side there the dead bush. And then over on the right, I thought, well, I'm going to stick a bigger rock than normal. So I put a big rock there, and then behind him, uh, between his legs, there's a medium to smaller sized rock. And then uh, when I went to put that on there, the larger rock, because it's larger, it's got wavy areas underneath it. So what happened is, is I wanted to go ahead and knock down that wavy area so it would be a lot smoother. So all I did was just took the rock and then I grabbed some of the sandpaper there 
and I went in and just scraped it along on the sandpaper till it got nice and smooth here. As you can see, I got a big rock with a flat bottom on it, and then the other rock is right there next to the sandpaper. So I went ahead and applied some super glue on it and put it right on there. So now our dead bush and the two rocks are placed on the base, and the dead bush is definitely being placed on the base a lot quicker now. So you just take the, uh, the amount of um, grass that you're using, rolling it up, apply some super glue right there. Just I placed it in there for like five seconds, enough for it to, to grab, and then I just let go of the grass and I just pushed it so it stood up this direction nice and stood up this direction nice, and then it was all ready to go from there. So then from there, I went ahead and applied the super glue to the base and definitely used the old toothpick trick. So I applied some super glue onto the tip of our toothpick here and I just started moving it around. Now as you can see here, that you can see the wood that I used to hold the miniature. So I went ahead and just took the piece of wood, I took the miniature, put it right there, and so now I was able to take the toothpick and then use the glue and then just go ahead and move the glue around. So it's like I got a third hand now. So excellent, excellent idea there. So then now that the glue is on there, you go ahead and get the objects that you want to place on the base. In the case we're going to be using gravel. So I went ahead and just dumped the base into the gravel. And then I went ahead and just took the X-Acto knife and I took the bottom of it and I moved gravel onto the base and I started pushing it down so that the gravel is pushed down into the super glue instead of just resting on it because then it'll possibly come off a little bit easier. So just push it in there, put some more on there, push it down, some more on, push it down, and just do it several times so you get a good uh, setting of the gravel onto the super glue. So you go ahead and pull it out and just go ahead and just give it a tap down and all that excess stuff is going to go flying around. And then you go ahead and just take what I did was the X-Acto knife and I went ahead and just started picking at it. So the rock and the dead bush and then the boots of the bandito. I would pick off the little pieces of gravel that was on them. And then around the rim of the base, I just use your thumb and just kind of just move it along and just the... Uh, gravel that's overhanging the base will catch your thumb and it'll just flip off. So once all that is done, remember with the bush, now that it was five foot, now it's dropped down to two, just go ahead and take your scissors and you can start with a horizontal cut if you want, but after you do that first cut, start coming at it at different angles, up, down, high, and low, just so you're going to give a, a irregular looking cut to the bush so it doesn't look like a uh, naturally grown bush. Well in this case it's a naturally dead bush. <laughs> so there we go we got the uh, base looking all nice and good there. Uh, the pieces of gravel is flicked off from the outer rim area so it's looking nice and neat. Off the back there you can barely see the rock medium to small size rock that's between the bandito's legs. So everything's looking nice, giving a good story there. And then when you're all done and you think that it's all good to go, go ahead and grab that uh, the spray on varnish where we're using from testers. The spray lacquer gives it a matte varnish so it's going to dull down the color, but as you can see here it looks kind of shiny. and. What ends up happening is, give it about an hour or two hours, and it actually, because when I'm looking at it now, it looks a lot duller than it does on the uh, picture there. So, definitely off the back, uh, the picture is showing it very shiny, but I'm seeing it, it's dulling down very good. So, just give it a little bit, and eventually it's going to dull down. All right, well, there you have it, our Bandito, all the way from assembly to primed. Step one, step two, and finally, step three. 
The overall time for the Bandito, including painting, changing of paints, drying, gluing, etc., was around 4 hours and 45 minutes. Now with the Bandito complete, let's go ahead and continue on with the U.S. Marshal. After analyzing the U.S. Marshal, it looks like I'll also be painting the U.S. Marshal in three steps. Since there is no painting guide that I can use as a reference for what the U.S. Marshal looks like or what colors to use, I have found several pictures to use as references, including the hero character sheet. For the paints, I'm only going to be using the paints that came with the Shadows of Brimstone Heroes of the Old West paint set. And remember, just like the Bandito, I'll be painting off screen and then returning to discuss the step by step of the painting I just did. But if you still would like to see someone paint the U.S. Marshal, you can head on over to the YouTube channel Tabletop Noob to watch him paint this miniature, the U.S. Marshal, paint by paint. And as you know, I left a link down in the show notes where you can find the video. So now that we're ready to go, let's go ahead and see what we'll be doing in step one. For step one, we'll be applying that first color, the base coat, to the whole miniature. And there's about 12 areas to deal with. We got the hat, the hair, the flesh, and the rifle. The shirt, the vest, badge, and the belt. Holster, pants, boots, and then the base rim. For the hat and the pants, we'll be painting that a light brown. So we'll be taking the dark flesh, and then we'll be adding a little bit of the spirit white to that to go ahead and lighten it up a little bit. For the flesh, we'll be painting that the light flesh. And then the rifle, it's got two different areas to deal with. So we'll be using the dark flesh for the brown and pistol metal. For the shirt, we'll be painting it white, and then we'll be applying a wash to it. We'll be doing like a pink or a light red wash. So we'll go ahead and use a saloon red, and then add some spirit white to that to go ahead and tone down the red to make it a lighter red or a pink. And then we'll go ahead and add some water to that to turn it into a wash, and then we'll go ahead and apply that during step two. For the badge, we'll be uh, using a new color here called Loot Gold. And then for the hair, the vest, the belt, holster, the boots, and also the base rim, we'll be using that dark flesh. So with all that information and paints ready to go, let's go ahead and start painting our base coats with Step 1. Hello there and welcome back as we just finished up step one of applying that first color, the base coat, to our U.S. Marshal. Step one took me about 45 minutes to complete. I just like to say that I'm very happy with the speed that I got the U.S. Marshal completed. Plus I'm very happy with the colors that I'm using because they're actually covering up the primer very well. Um, except for the white shirt, the primer is actually bleeding through the white shirt a little bit. But we'll go ahead and talk about that here in a little bit. The thing is, is that for this miniature and the other miniatures, I've been having help with the painting of these miniatures. And not necessarily the paint or the paint brushes, but for looking at the small details, like the buttons on his shirt or the belt buckles or anything else like that. Now, the two devices, and one you can't see because it's off screen, and it's actually my light source. And it's a magnifying glass. So we got ourselves a magnifying glass, and this one is a five times plus the light source. Turn it off. One, two, three, and four position brightness. So that's that one. And then the other one I got is over here, and this one's actually a 12 power. And also, it's got a couple more hands. So we can have four hands now one and two three and four. So we've got some alligator clips that you can go and clip on to, well, preferably like a piece of cardboard that can then hold your base. Uh, don't apply it directly to your base because the alligator clips are going to bite into it and you don't want to damage the base. So there is my two helpers that I've been have helping me so far. 
So let's go ahead and take a look at our U.S. Marshal to see what we got going on. Well, as you can see, he's all dressed up in browns. We got some light brown and dark brown going on. And those, as I said, were holding back the primer so they weren't bleeding through that much. Now, I did the applying and mixing of the light brown paints backwards. And I went ahead and put two drops of the dark flesh down, and then I applied one drop of the spirit white into it and mixed it all up together. And it turned out way, way light. So I didn't like that. I ended up applying three more drops of the dark flesh so that it would darken up to this color here. Now remember on the gunslinger that I put down a couple drops of the saloon red and then I added a drop of the shadow black to it and when I mixed it together it kind of turned purplish. I don't know exactly why that happened but I just wanted it to get a darker red so definitely just mix and separate your paints first and then slowly mix a little bit by little bit into it to build up to the color that you want to. So the flesh on the hands were actually bleeding through a little bit whereas the face was not and I don't really know exactly why so it's kind of weird how sometimes things are going to bleed and sometimes they won't. So let's go and take a look at uh, the right side of our US Marshal and you're not really able to see the bleeding through on the white that much because the light up top is kind of washing it out. But there is some bleed throughs on that. So we'll have to probably apply one or two more coats onto the white to go ahead and get it solid. And for our U.S. Marshal, uh, you remember for this uh, badge, I used the Loot Gold. Well, I thought I'd give him some extra bling. And in his holster is a pistol, and if you can see that, he's got a golden handle. A little zoom in there, so I give him a little extra bling there, and he's got a golden handle for his pistol. So that's looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and go to the back here. And it looks like we got ourselves the Leaning Tower of U.S. Marshal. So definitely, you should probably do some dry fitting to your models when you go ahead and apply them to certain areas. So in this case, should have seen that the model was going to be tipping a little bit, so definitely use some sandpaper and then just grab hold of the model and slide it backwards onto the sandpaper to go ahead and even out the feet so that when you do put them onto the base, he'll be directly up and down. Now another thing you can see here is we got the muzzle of the rifle. It looks like it's all gnawed up. And if you remember, I did say that on the U.S. Marshal for his rifle, I did break off the tip of the gun twice. And luckily enough, I was able to find the barrel as opposed to with like the Bandito that I was not. So now the Bandito's got a holdout pistol instead of a pistol. But when you go ahead and assemble the model of the U.S. Marshal, you're going to be gluing the hand to the wrist. And what ends up happening is, as you can see here, the hand is directly in line with the wrist and the arm. And it actually should have been pushed forward a little bit so it's centered right on the wrist. Well, as you can see, the back of his head to the gun, there's just this little space. And if I would have moved that hand forward, then you're going to have even less space. So sometimes you might want to look and analyze your models and miniatures beforehand that you have to assemble to say, all right, well, if I'm going to glue this here, then I hardly have an area that I'm going to be able to paint. So maybe you might want to paint your model first and then go ahead and glue on and attach anything else later on. All right, over on the left-hand side here, he's uh, looking pretty good. Nothing any special or anything like that. Uh, he did have a an extra little bit of detail with the dark brown that he's using. So we got the dark brown for his boots, his vest, and also a little on the rim of his hat up top where his head sticks into. I went ahead and colored that a dark brown also. So given a dark brown, light brown kind of color scheme going on here. Now you can see the, the top of the hat there a little bit better from this bird's eye view. 
And you also can see his gold star for his U.S. Marshal badge. And he's looking pretty good so far. So we're going to go ahead and get him going. Now with the base coats applied, let's go ahead and see what we're going to be doing in step two. So for step two, we're going to go ahead and do some touch-ups, detailing, highlighting, and applying a wash. And we're going to go ahead and do this for the entire model. And go ahead and uh, everything is looking really good right now except for the shirt. So probably a couple more coats of white on there and that should probably do it. And hopefully I don't bleed over into the vest or anything like that so that I don't have to go back and do some extra time and fixing things up. And then the hands, I'm going to go ahead and have to add a little bit of a touch up light flesh to them to get them a little bit more solid. And then for our detailing, um, he's got some buttons on his shirt. Now, I'm thinking I might just leave them white so that when I go ahead and go back with a wash, they'll, they'll stick out from the light red pink wash that I'm going to do for the shirt. Uh, we also got detailing. He's got a belt buckle for his pants and then the belt for his holster. Uh, it's got some kind of a, a belt on there that we can hit up with some silver. For the highlighting, we'll go ahead and just hit him up with some white to go ahead and give him the uh, dusty look of the Wild West. And then finally, we'll go ahead and hit him up with a wash using some soft tone ink here. And I got to make sure that I apply the wash to everything except for the shirt. Because for the shirt, we're going to go ahead and take some saloon red and then the spear white. And then we're going to go ahead and dull down the red to get to the point of maybe even a pink that will then add up. I think it's like four drops I did for the saloon girl's hair using the uh, dark flesh. So I'll go ahead and add like four or so. And then I'll go ahead and apply this pink mixture of a wash to his shirt. And that should probably do it. And we should be ready to go then. So, with all that information and paints ready to go, let's go ahead and continue on with step two. Hello there and welcome back as we just finished up step two with our touch-ups, detailing, highlighting, and a wash to our U.S. Marshal. Step 2 took me about an hour to complete, and overall I'm very happy with the results. Now I did have an issue regarding the wash that I applied to the white shirt, as it came out a little bit darker than what I expected. I wanted to have a light red or a pink look to it, but it did come out a little bit darker, and we'll go ahead and talk about that when I get to the wash section. So let's go ahead and take a look at our U.S. Marshal. As you can see, we got a lot of browns going on here, and it was holding back the dark black primer that was underneath, as opposed to the white shirt where we had to apply two more coats to it. And then for the hands, we had to apply one more coat of that light flesh to it so that it would hold back the black primer. Um, other than that, everything else seemed to do pretty good. Over here on his right hand side, we got the issue with the browns and the whites battling it out on the vest opening that's nearest the badge. And then on the curve over the right shoulder, you can see that we got the brown and white kind of uh, bleeding over onto each other. Now normally we can go ahead and just take a paintbrush and use the appropriate color and go ahead and just paint over it so it makes it look nice and good. But instead, I'm going to go down the painting process a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and use some washes to go ahead and alleviate that problem and show you how washes can be used to um, make the colors get blended away. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that pretty soon. On the back is the same as the front. Our browns are holding back the black primer, and the whites, I had to go ahead and apply two more coats, and the light flesh on the hands, one more coat. Other than that, the back's looking pretty good. Now after the touch-ups, we go to the detailing, and I was going to apply some silver for the detailing with the pistol metal, but instead I decided to use some more bling for our U.S. Marshal, and I went ahead and used the loot gold that 
I had used for his badge and I put that on the buttons and then the belt buckle for his pants and the belt buckle for his holster belt. So that came out uh, very well. And then after the detailing we go to the highlighting. And as you can see here, it looks like our U.S. Marshal has lost against a bag of flour. <laughs> so I have no idea what went wrong on this one because I took the dry brush, dipped it into a little bit of white paint, brushed it off on the paper towel, then on my thumb to see exactly if there was anything left. And then when I put my first coat onto his boot, a lot of white came off. And then I went ahead and just softly ran it across the front and then off the back. And as you can see here, like I said, it looks like he lost against a bag of flowers. So I don't know exactly why it didn't catch the highlights, unless for some reason there wasn't a lot of uh, high areas on his pants and his vest. But it sure does look like it by looking at the miniature. So that's something you definitely got to be aware of, is make sure that your miniature is going to have a lot of areas that are peaked up and highlighted, so that it won't look like you're just applying a bunch of white across the whole surface there. Now on the back is the same way that there's a lot of flat areas it looks like, except for like between his legs, so that when you're going across it, you know, the paintbrush isn't going down into the V of his legs there, and that area is going to be looking kind of a little bit darker. So after the highlights, we go into the washes, and we're going to do two different kinds of washes. One, we do the wash for the shirt, and then we're going to do a wash for the whole miniature itself, which includes the shirt. So I went ahead and applied two parts of Saloon Red and then one part of Spirit White. And I mixed them all together at once, which was probably the mistake. And I went ahead and applied another Spirit White. And then I went ahead and added in about six to eight drops of water to thin it out. And it seemed pretty thin that when I applied a couple uh, strokes on there, it seemed pretty nice. But after I started applying a little bit more, it kind of darkened up a little bit. And especially with the washes, what happens is that you'll go ahead and you'll apply it. And then if you don't like it and you wipe it away with a paper towel, it kind of leaves a ring around the edge of the paintbrush stroke. So you got to watch out for that that if you're going to go ahead and use a wash with a different, um, not just this uh, soft tone ink, but use your special colors, that if you don't like it and you try to wipe it away, it's going to leave like a little ring around there. So be careful with that. So then anyway, so I did that with the, the front here, and it, it came out a little bit darker, as I said, and as you're going to see here pretty soon, that... This is the color that I wanted it to be, which was a lot lighter. And that way you could see the white shirt very good, and then you can just see a very light tinge of the red and white making the pink come through. So now as you can see here on the right side, as before where we had the brown and white battling it out, now we got the brown and the the wash battling it out. And as you can see here, it doesn't really look like a wash. It more like looks like it's just a bleed through. But when you do look at the miniature itself, it looks very well because you can see some white there. So it looks like that you got this shirt underneath there with some red on it. Now, as you can see here, that the opening of the vest near the badge has got some of the pink on the inside, and there's a little bit of spot on the curve over the shoulder. And we're going to go ahead and deal with that a little bit more when we go to the full wash section. Now on the back is the same as the front. Went ahead and applied that wash. Got a little bit too darker. But you can see some of the areas on the left arm there. On the creases, it's a little bit on the white side. And then on the right sleeve, it's a little bit on the light side, but not that much. So next we went ahead and did our full wash using the soft tone ink. And then went ahead and just applied everything. Now don't go using a big brush and apply a big glop of it. Go and use a, a, a nice medium sized paintbrush and then go to certain areas and paint at them 
with the wash like you would just with normal paints. And so as you can see here, everything seems to be darkening up pretty good. And it's pulling the whole miniature together. So on the right side here, we got that same issue with our battling of our brown and whites, which got alleviated with the wash of the shirt. And now we got the browns and the light red. But by applying the wash of the soft tone ink to the whole miniature there, you can see how that knocked down the colors so that now there's nothing on the inside of that vest part that was near the badge and also over the curve of the right shoulder. So as you can see, you can use washes to get rid of the, the battling of the overbleeding of the paints, but not big globs and blotches of paints. That's something else that you got to repaint. So it's looking pretty good there. And then on the back, applying the wash, it seemed to hold uh, the good areas of all the crevices and the creases that it makes some good contrast and especially on the hands get some of that uh, soft tone ink wash in between the fingers there so it actually looks like fingers instead of a big glob of flesh all right and with our final step remaining let's go ahead and see what we'll be doing in step three so for step three we're going to be doing that basing and protecting of our miniature for the basing, we'll be applying some of that gravel onto the base, and then we'll be using some of that dead grass to form that bush over here on the left side, and then we'll apply some of those, I don't know, large rocks or medium rocks or whatever around there, so some kind of a design of some sort, and we'll see how that looks. And then for the protecting, we'll be using that spray-on varnish from Testers, the uh, spray lacquer for the matte varnish, so we'll dull down the, the brightness of our our colors, the shininess, will be knocking that down. So with all that information, spray and other items ready to go, let's go ahead and finish our miniature with step three. Hello there and welcome back as we just finished up step three with our basing and protecting of our US Marshal. Step three took me about an hour and 15 minutes to complete and overall I'm very very happy with the results. Our basing did a couple things. First of all, it depicts the area or the surroundings that your miniature is in. So in the case of our U.S. Marshal, he's in a gravelly area and then there's a dead bush nearby. So it probably depicts that he's in an area that is either low or depleted of water. And then second of all, even though the basing material doesn't have a light source, Psychologically, it actually makes the shirt on the U.S. Marshal a little bit lighter than what I thought it was going to be. Now, before we had the base was a dark brown, the pants brown, the vest brown, and it made the shirt look darker than normal. And after I did the basing on here with this light-colored gravel and the light-colored dead bush there, it actually makes the shirt look a little bit lighter in color and actually a little bit better than I thought it would be. So overall came out very very nice. So let's go ahead and take a look at our US Marshal and see what we got here. As you can see he is set a little bit back farther from the center so that gives a nice big open area in the front to deal with and went ahead and applied a dead bush and some rocks and some gravel. So as you can see here on the left side, I went ahead and put a dead bush there, but then I thought, you know, I'm going to split it a little bit so I'll have some gravel run between it. So it'll look like a couple dead bushes there. And then in the back, I have placed a big rock, so it gives it kind of a backdrop to the U.S. Marshal there. And then in the front, I applied several medium-sized rocks. Now, I didn't really mean to think that it was going to be a grave of some sort. I just want it to be a pile of rocks. That's all. Now one thing I did was with the large rock in the back, as you can see, it looks kind of dry and light in color. So here it is, a little bit light and dry in color, 
and also those medium sized rocks in the front those are also a little bit light and uh, dry in color but you really can't see them that good because they're kind of washed out from the light but what I did was I was going to use the soft tone ink to darken them up but I didn't really want to darken them up I just wanted to make them uh, shinier and such and not necessarily that the US Marshal was walking through a rainstorm or anything like that just make it a little bit shinier so what I did is I took some Gorilla Super Glue gel and I applied it to the big rock in the back and also the rocks in the front so as you can see here uh, mostly the rock in the back is that it actually looks a little bit shinier so uh, not necessarily shiny glossy like paint but just a nice shiny wet look to it and then on the back here also you can see that it looks a little bit shinier a wet look and also you can see the detail of the rock a little bit better so if you want go ahead and use yourself some super glue instead of using some kind of wash to make uh, certain things a little bit shinier whether it be um, rocks for the base or maybe even um, something on the miniature you want to make look shiny so when we were all ready to go I went ahead and just took some super glue and put it in spaces between the rocks and the US Marshal there and then go ahead and grab yourself a, a toothpick or maybe a dead paintbrush and then just move it around the base and definitely don't go over the side onto the rim because you know when you go ahead and paint that a little bit better you're gonna have a big bump there and it's gonna just look kind of uh, pretty bad after we got all that super glue laid down just go ahead and take that uh, base and put it right down into the area of gravel that we're using and then go ahead and take some kind of a a flat device whether it be the end of an exacto knife or maybe a uh, pencil on the eraser end or maybe a, a fat thick uh, paintbrush and just go and just tap it down so that the gravel is being pushed into the super glue and not just on top of it but get it down into it so that it'll hold it in place really good so when you're all done, just go and take them out, give them a little tap off so all the excess goes flying all over the place. Now, as you can see here, the gravel is all over the place. It's even on the large rock in the back and the rocks in the front. So as you can see here, I went ahead and dumped the base underneath the gravel before the large rock and the medium-sized rocks here were dry. So now we got a bunch of gravel stuck to these big rocks and medium sized rocks. But, you know, go ahead and just take, in my case, I took the X Acto knife and just take some kind of a pointy device and just start flicking them off really quick because otherwise your super glue is going to be drying on that rock and you'll have a bunch of gravel stuck on there. So go ahead and get those things off. And then the end result, you're going to have a nice big sized rock in the back and some medium rocks in the front, all above the gravel. And then go ahead and chop down your dead bush there and remember uh, come at it you know just go ahead and chop it straight across if you want but then afterwards go ahead and hit angles around it so that it doesn't look like an unnatural looking dead bush it'll look kind of like a natural formation so there we go coming around the back looking pretty good and remember that if you got yourself some of that gravel that's on the uh, rim of the base just take your thumb and slide it along and then just use your other finger to wipe off any kind of rocks that uh, get caught on the thumb and just keep moving it all the way around till nothing is on the rim there come over here on the left hand side it's looking pretty good got that big rock exposed so it's giving it some kind of a nice natural look to where he's at And then from there, when you're all happy with what you got there for the basing, we're going to go ahead and apply that spray-on varnish from Testers, that spray lacquer. So it's going to provide a matte varnish and dull down the look of your paint. 
and then off on the back it looks pretty good there kind of dull down I can see it's pretty dull down here on the miniature itself but on the picture you can see on his upper back by his left shoulder it's kind of shiny but that's just from the light source that I got going so overall it's looking pretty dang good and there you have it our US Marshall all the way from assembly to primed step one step two and finally step three the overall time for the US Marshall including painting changing of paints drying gluing etc was around three hours well that should do it that is going to complete the painting of the bandito and the US Marshal now that our two heroes are all in color and ready to go let's go ahead and get our two heroes back down to the gaming table for some more action <laughs> 